Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another modded weapon. Now this is another modded handheld railgun, and it's called the Type 42 Heavy Anti-Equipment Magnetic Railgun, which is this glorious thing I am now holding. So this is a fully animated and very custom model that has some very impressive stats to go along with it. So it has a 3 second charge up before each shot, it has 3 shots per magazine, and it has a 2 kilometer range, which is absolutely insane. So what we're going to do is have a look at this model, have a look at it firing, then in the distance there I've got a bunch of targets set up, we're going to shoot each of these, and that'll be that. So for the model itself, this is what we get, all of it is absolutely custom, unlike the other railgun, which is basically a very small version of the ship railgun, this one is completely custom, and just looking down the barrel, that's what we get. So what I'll do is put the camera all the way through the barrel, here we go, it's going to get a bit trippy going forwards, we can go all the way down, to where the projectile is going to go out. And there we go, it's this little circular part right here. Pulling away from that and moving around onto the side, there we go, we've got some lovely hazard skin along the side there, we've got this little black rim along the top, there we go. We also have four white sections, which sort of separates the gun into four separate parts, just for decorative purposes. Moving along the barrel over to this section, so this is the main part where we're going to pull the trigger, where the magazine is going to go in, we do have one hell of a lot of detail which you wouldn't normally see. So where my hand is currently sitting is where it's going to open up during the reload animation, and up and above we can see our scope, where I will mention right now it does use another optional mod, we get a very fancy display when looking through the scope. Yes, we can see all the little notches where you could potentially adjust it, but you can't actually do that in game. Moving all the way up and looking down, that's a better look at that. Getting a bit closer out to this section, like I said, a lot of detail has gone onto this which you wouldn't normally see during gameplay. There is a scope right there. Coming down and over to the trigger section, this is what we get. I can hopefully pan the camera all the way in so I can remove the hand. There we go with that, looking all the way around. Over to the magazine, and down and underneath it. They're just moving around towards the stock, which is sort of going into the arm. That's what we get at the very back. We also got a little heat vent at the back for the heat to eject out. There is no effect of steam coming out of it when you're firing it, so you just have to imagine that's happening. Onto the opposite side, there we go. And moving all the way along. And that is that for the outside of it. So now what I'm going to do is just grab hold of my character, come into first person view, this is what we get when we aim down the scope with the additional mod, so it's going to make it like a night vision type scope, if I was to turn around and look over here, you can see that blocks become very blindly white, but if you look at the dummy in the distance, we see it's very clearly highlighted against the background. But coming out of that and looking around, there we go, we can clearly see it on the side, and I can't really move the character around, get a better look. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is fire it into the distance, so 3, 2, 1, and there it goes. There's a three second delay between each shot, there we go. Then once we've fired all three shots, we'll go into a reload animation, but like I said, we've got some fancy animations to go along with it. We'll get a better look at that in just a second, but I'll come to the third person camera, and we're going to fire it one more time. So here we go, we're going to fire it like so. There we go, we see the front barrel moves backwards, firing it again, and then again. We're now going to the reload animation where the barrel comes out. Part of that black section moves forwards, Yes, it was very quick, so I'll do it one more time. Reloading. And there we go. Extremely fancy stuff. And you just notice that there is proper warnings on here that we can move all the way up to and actually read, where it says caution moving parts and danger strong magnetic field, as well as a medical kit over there. Yes, we just go and take a better look at that firing animation once again, over from this angle. So there we go, we do get kind of a shockwave coming out of the barrel. Again. And as we can see a little bit of particle effects coming out as well. There's the reload animation. And there we go. If you were to look at it from this section, where we fire it, you can sort of see the projectiles coming out. There's another shot. We can see our shockwave, we can see the particle effects, as well as a little blue puff that comes out the end there. Yes, that is that for firing it, that is that for the model. What we'll do is very quickly just touch on the actual cost of building this thing, so we're into this. Very handy assembler, production tab, here is the gun, so it's going to be quite a long time before you can build this because it does use cobalt for both the gun and the ammunition. The ammunition does use quite a lot, but that is for good measure because you can sort of spam this thing and it is very strong and has an extremely long range. 
So we've got iron ingots, nickel, cobalt, silver, gold and platinum to build the gun. Over to the ammunition, we simply use iron, cobalt and magnesium, which isn't too bad. But look at how much cobalt we need, 7.33 per magazine, and each magazine can only hold three shots. So what we're going to do now is shoot some of these targets in the background. I've sort of labelled the blocks in the background so you've got a rough idea of what's going on. We've got light, heavy, interior walls, blast or edge blocks, solar panels and some windows, and of course a bunch of dummies in front of them that we're going to blast. Now I'm not too sure if we're actually going to be able to destroy the dummies during my testing. It was a bit funny whether it hit it or not. It was very hit or miss, so to say. But we're going to come up to this one on the end here and we're going to blast them point blank and we'll see what kind of damage we can deal. So into this. First shot, it looks like we hit. Second shot. And yes, this is what happened during my testing. It doesn't really seem to want to hit the target. So what I'm going to do is reload that and then just move on to the blocks in the background. So here we've got a bunch of light steel blocks. We're just going to shoot it without aiming down the side because it is quite blinding. And first shot. I think that might be the problem why I wasn't hitting the dummy because that seemed very, very off with the shooting. But as you saw there, one shot went through a single light steel block as well as damage all the blocks around it. Just aiming a bit onto the side, firing again. One shot, one block. Reloading that and moving over to the heavy armoured blocks. Now I'm going to actually try and aim it down the side so we can actually see where we're going. So that was one shot. And we can see it didn't go all the way through it. Switching to a well done walking up to it. And of course bringing up the HUD. We see it did one hell of a lot of damage to all the blocks in the area. They're down to about 78%. And of course the blocks on the side here are not looking too good. So we just well that up. We actually get a better look at the damage dealt. So that was the point of impact. And it looks like it just did a tiny bit of damage to the heavy armoured blocks. So it was looking like an absolute nightmare for light armoured blocks. For heavy armour, it doesn't seem too bad. So there's two shots. There's a third shot. Back to the well done coming over. Yes, it looks like we're going to take about four or five shots to go through heavy armoured large blocks. Now we move across to the interior walls, which should be basically the same as the light armoured blocks. But here we go. Straight into that. And of course, we're going to blast away one block per shot. Firing again. Now moving across to the blast or blocks. And there we go. Moving up to it with the welder. Looking like we're about the same as the heavy armoured blocks, but we're going to shoot out one more time. Shooting out once again. And we can also clearly see the bullet hole that's left behind it. Yes, it's looking like it's going to be a fourth shot to kill it. But now we can move across to the solar panels. One shot should be all we need. And there we go. It sort of did a big area damage with that. But now we can just come across to the windows and that'll be that. Windows are abnormally strong for a block. One shot. And I believe that is gone. Firing that one. And that one is gone. So light armoured blocks are going to be absolutely annihilated by this. But it does seem like it's only going to take out one block at a time. So for one final test, what we're going to do is test out the penetration against the light armoured blocks. I'm not going to do it against the heavy because it could not destroy it in one go. And I don't think there's much point in testing against windows or solar panels. So what I'm going to do is come up next to our good friend the training dummy, aim down the side, get absolutely blinded by the scope, and fire straight into it. We can see that the front block has been destroyed. We can see these blocks around it have become very deformed. And then switching over to my grinder, flying into the hole, landing down, and we'll see what kind of damage we have dealt. So looking up and around, nothing has been damaged on these sides, so there is no splash damage. But looking at the block behind it, it did take some damage. It took 40% damage, so it is partly penetrating through the blocks. And there we go. And if it was just to say remove this block and check the one behind it. Back over to tab number two to the welder. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. But as for that, that is pretty much it for what the railgun has to offer. It's a fun little weapon if you are looking for something stronger to use on the ground. The range is absolutely insane with the two kilometers on it. It does have a fantastic model, a fantastic animation to it, and it's not too powerful at the end of the day. Any kind of battleship that's using heavy armor or blast or blocks is going to be able to absorb lots of shots from you, and even light steel blocks are going to be able to survive multiple people using this and shooting them. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with yourself. Highly recommend you do because it is a fun little weapon. And I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.